Well hello, welcome back to my channel. It's only me. I said that I would do some cooking so I'm going to try. So where's best to put my chocolate Hmm. Probably just need to move this kettle a bit back. Don't turn the kettle on. Might get ideas and actually have a cup of tea. So um, I'm going to try my first chickpea bean burger. So um, I'm going to make it vegan, gluten free, dairy free. And I've never made one before, so forgive me right now if I cock it up, it's just the way it goes. So even if I make a terrible, terrible mistake with this, I'm still gonna try and cook it, and I'm gonna show you the end result. So I'm gonna use some chickpeas out of the can. I'm gonna use some sweet corn. Just put that in the sieve. I have already washed my chickpeas. I'm going to use um, some grilled, uh, what are these grilled peppers? I don't think I need the liquor from this, so I'm just going to pour that away. I'm just ready to hand now. I'm covering oil or whatever that's in, so I'm just leaving that to uh, drain away because I have no interest in adding extra calories because it's only how many days now? It's about I think I worked it out that I've got 43 days left until I go to Disney, which is just like amazing. I'm just gonna move you slightly. That's better. That's better, get to see my kitchen in all its glory, unfortunately. So, um, I know I've got a, I've got a, a Lucy's Cookery School thing on, but I never went to it. It was just given to me husband, but it is, if you ever go to Lucy's on a plate, it's a very good gluten-free restaurant. And um, so this is, grilled artichokes now i've not cooked with these before so i'm just going to take a few of those out i think then i'm going to put some black olives in it give it a bit of a med vibe then i'm going to put grilled gherkins in it and i saw um like a similar recipe on bex and Eamon who i follow their van lifers and i do not know what on earth you call these in america but around here they're called spring onions and um, i don't know what you guys call them now, I think it might be shallots, but shallots over here are different. I'm just like little onions and a red onion. And then instead of mayo, I am using avocado. Now, as you can see, these are busy defrosting. And that's because when I've used half of my salads, I then pop them into a freezer bag and then I use them in a recipe or a smoothie because it doesn't really matter what they look like when they've defrosted. And then I'm just going to start with the chopping, I think. Yes, chop down. I'm going to take my chopping down that chopping time down by a large amount because I'm going to use this thing, which is basically, I don't have a food processor, so it's, I don't know, blender, like a ninja bullet. So I'm just gonna put that stuff in there. So I've got, trying my hardest not to be messy but it's not working and um, have of course washed my hands i'm sure that delia smith would be turning turning green with envy my skills so i'm just going to try and pulse that down now it should have enough liquid with it because to be fair it still feels quite oily and because I'm not adding any, if I'm going to add any extra liquid I'm going to use the um, dill pepper liquid from that so I'm just going to while I'm chopping I'm going to put that together so I can get a paste and let's see how this works like I said I haven't done it before and I have got my emergency masher if I can find it so if I require an emergency mashing I shall have to use it and it's a bit noisy this so I might fast forward through this bit. Mm, give it a good shake. I did actually forget is I forgot to put any chili in this and I am going to put some chili in I think I've got like half a red chili left 
And of course, it's just no good when your hands are a bit. My hands are not are not happy. Oh, that looks good. So we've kind of like half mashed, half not mashed, which is just perfect, I think. And I'm going to leave that upside down in there so it all comes out. Oh, lovely. Check it. It came out dead good. I'll put just a tiny bit of water in it. And then I'm going to start adding my chopped ingredients when I've actually chopped them up, of course. So I will try to keep this video interesting. I think while well, um, while I'm getting like the chopped bits sorted, um, I think I'll probably just put on screen, you know, the things that I'm using and some of the kind of benefits. A lot of my um, a lot of my uni work was kind of not researching this. There's nothing to do with my uni work, but. Um, a lot of it's got to do with researching and knowing knowing why you're using something really so rather than you just watch me chop stuff which i must think i must say sounds rather boring maybe to it as you can see i'm trying to keep all my mess off screen whether that one last more than two minutes i don't know so I like red onions because they are a little bit, um, they are a little bit kind of a, a more delicate flavour and I don't tend to use garlic where I use onion, mainly because th this Italian chef, Gino De Campo on the telly, he said, you know, if you were, uh, if you're going to need stuff like that, you, sh you shouldn't really need both. And I was like, well, if you're Italian, then you probably know a thing or two about onion and garlic, so... Or it could have been the French guy. Oh, I don't know. Can't remember. It's me and my rubbish references. And of course, I'm putting the spring onion in as well, but I'm just going to use um, spring onion leaf, really, more than anything, for a bit of green. Will I change my... I might change my... I might put a bit of celery in this. I like celery. And as you can see, definitely not a chef. Definitely, definitely not a chef. Right, so I'll use the rest of those in the salad in the week. Ditch that in the bin. And it just gives these a bit of a rinse through. So I like the idea of there being kind of different colours in my food. Um, I think that Michael Mosley, who's like a doctor on the BB, I think the BBC or Channel 4 or one of the English channels, he was, um, he always says like the Mediterranean diet is a really good idea. And to be fair, a lot of these ingredients you would find, you would find in that kind of diet. I mean, I don't know if the, if the Greeks are into chickpeas, but I'm just going to slide those in whole. And then what to do with the artichoke? Hmm. That's interesting. Right, okay. So I'm afraid there is only one way to get gherkins and that's to take them out of the jar by the fistful. I know I want to get these small because actually I don't want you to be able to think, oh, it's a, a pickled burger. But it, it needs, it does need the taste, you know, that kind of, munchy element and the, the thing that all the vegan burgers that I've had have been absolutely gorgeous and I don't particularly want this one to fail at the first step but we will see people we will see I think I might put this back in the uh, back in the in the whizzer so I might right so believe it or not I'm not into standing at my kitchen um, and making tons and tons of food. I'm kind of more of a, I don't call my style of cooking, even though I got cooking at school, I did rather well at it, but um, I think, oh, it's a, lots of oil. I think the uh, the problem is with, uh, with my style of cooking now is it's more of a, a putting together style. So, ooh. Ooh. 
having never cooked, I do hope you can cook this. Oh well, in for a penny, in for a pound. We'll see, won't we? And I will put all the, uh, I'll throw through, throw the points through as well with this. So I don't think it's going to have any problem being too dry because some of these ingredients are actually extremely wet. So I'm hoping it's not going to have a problem being too wet. Okay, so here we go. Say it like you mean it with avos. Go on, get out. So, like I said, these are defrosted, so they are really munchy, but they went when they went into the freezer, they were absolutely perfect. There was absolutely nothing wrong with them. Um, and I've always found, you know, if you use them in smoothies or anything, they are fab. Ugh, I made a right cock up of that one. I shall name this how to cock up with an avocado. Right, so. I think hands wash. Nobody wants to see green minging hands on the telly, do they? See, it's all right for Delia. She's got it all going on with the, uh, with the people helping out. Okay, so I want a bowl. Can I have a bowl? I don't know if I've got a bowl. I should have one. Here we are. Got one and it's clean. So I'm just going to ditch that all into a bowl. And then we'll go with the masher. Oh, this looks gorge. So, if you can see that in a minute, it doesn't look like a burger. It looks like a <laughs> reconstituted, reconstituted, um, salad at the minute oh, I still forgot to put my chilli in yeah, I'll do that now before I forget because otherwise it will just have no kick to it and that would be really upsetting is it really bad that I want to eat one of these olives it just you know it's refusing to be mashed go on get back in there <laughs> oh that's looking a bit more like it a bit more like a paste I think you know trying to get that the, the avocado that kind of is going to make it stick. I mean, you could put some gluten-free breadcrumbs through that if you wanted to. But it's, um, I think that'll fry up nicely. All right, so that's what it looks like now. So let's get the chickpea in and get that, not the chickpea, what's the word I'm looking for? Chilies. Of course, the important thing when it comes to chilies for me is to then not nip off to the uh, not nip off to the bathroom before I wash my hands, you know, and don't don't kind of squeeze them, don't rub my eyes. Now I was watching um, another lady make uh, I think just vegetarian one. She was adding egg. And she was saying, oh, they're perfect for the kids. And I was like, really? I'm afraid, uh, no. I don't think my kids will go anywhere near these. But as some of it's been frozen before, I wouldn't freeze it. But you're keeping the Tupperware for a couple of days, you know, if you weren't, if you weren't making them all. So I'm going in with seeds and all, peeps. And um, these are not a particular hot, you know, hot chilli. They're all right. And, um... They're not gonna. They're not gonna cause any mad burning or heartburn. I hope. Although we will wait and see, I suppose. Right then. I'm gonna need that one, and then I'm gonna need to switch to my pan. I will mix up that again, like if, like I've said in one of my other videos about living with um, a celiac. You know, it's all right for me. I choose to be dairy free. And the worst thing that's going to happen to me is that if you come near me um, and I am I am not dairy free, then, well, you might smell me before you see me. Sorry if that's too much information. But um, uh, there's something there that's decided not to be chopped up. I think it's dill. So I think one of the problems is that... Um, Yeah, one of the problems is that we don't have wooden utensils in our house because there is just too much chance of cross-contamination. 
If I see anything massive while I'm putting the burgers together, I'm either going to mash it in properly or I'm just going to take it out, I think. I don't want it wet. This mixture does look very wet. Really makes me want to put breadcrumbs in it, but that'll just bring up the uh, bring up the points value as well. So I suppose if you're making it to this recipe, then you might want to drain things off a little bit better. Okay, so here we go. I suppose I'm gonna have to get my hands a bit dirty, aren't I? Oh, this is vegan. It's rapeseed. I'll use some coconut just to be fair, just, just in case. I'll just use a teaspoon. Got a low melting point coconut, so just got to be careful, it burns quite easy, you know, in comparison to some of the vegetable oils that I use. I don't tend to use animal fats anyway, but I just want to be here. Yeah. I want to be sure. I think I've made enough for about four burgers here. So let's have a little look. I mean, you could just put this on a sandwich. There's nothing in it that you can't eat straight away. You might blow your head off with the chilli light. Right. So I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes on each side, I think. And I'm going to make two. One for me and one for the kids to try. Oh, I could put flour in it, couldn't I? I might try one with a bit of flour. Oh, it's just starting to sizzle. Exciting times, people. So this is the flour that I like to use. Um, so it's the Dubs Farm. I think just to make it look a bit drier, it would be a good idea to have some flour in this. So I'm just going to take, so I've got this measure right here that does like a tablespoon at a time. So I'm going to take two and see how that kind of thickens things up. Because then I can put it through the Weight Watchers app as well. The Weight Watchers app actually did have a vegan, not the app, the magazine, did have a vegan, um, yeah, it did have a vegan burger recipe. It came out at eight smart points and I thought, I think I can make it for, for less than that. Oh, that's better. Yeah, I don't know if you can see how that consistency's changed, but you can see that it's a lot more kind of patty style, so... Patty style, have you heard me? Sound right, Charlie. Yeah. The one way, the one without, and I'll try both, of course. And the rest, I think I'll stick in Tupperware and see if I can make it again tomorrow. Oh, see, that's a plan when you get a Tupperware top and pot that is actually the same. I don't know about you, but in my house that hardly ever happens. In you get, go on. Don't say you're not fitting in, of course you are. So I have cooked with chickpeas before. Um, I tend to um, put them into casseroles, you know, just to fill them out. But I've never, and I've had them in, I think, a salad, but I've never cooked with chickpeas before. I actually put them in, well, a loose, a loose uh, description of a recipe or so. Loose, 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 loose. loose. Right, well, I'll get back to you when this is done. So as you can see, they are 
very nearly ready. I've flipped them over. They've actually taken about four minutes on each side and they need gathered over when they're kind of flipped over. They're not, they're not solid. So I'll work on that for next time. <laughs> but I shall see you in one time. Mm, so I've come the tiniest bit unstuck because what I wanted to do was of course put this on a bread roll even though that would take about five five smart points unfortunately the bread rolls that I have picked up are neither vegan nor are they um, dairy free so I've just saved myself five smart points I don't know what these are but I will I will pop it up on screen, but let's just have a little taste. Maybe I should put some salt in, but I'm thinking. So this is the one with the with the flour in it. So it's got a bit. It has got a bit more form to it. So let's have a listen. Mm. It's nice, but it's got too much pickle in it. And the one without. That's really, really nice, the one without flour. So I think the moral of that story is that we require no flour and the pickle needs to go into the, uh, needs to go into the blender. But other than that, yeah, I'll eat that. Especially if I had a blooming burger bun to put it on. But you know, I said I'd put it on the, I said I'd put it on the screen anyway. Hello. In my vegan burger. Not bad for a good a good start. And I put it on a plate and take a picture of it and make it look a bit better, but that's about it. I'll see you next time. I'm right, bye.